Commando Strike Force for the PC. During World War II, a team is assembled, consisting of three people, in order to help combat the Nazis. The Commando Strike Force consists of the spy, who's the leader, who infiltrates and expects people to follow his orders because he's an officer in a piece of fiction about, you know, a war, so that's his personality. The Green Beret, who's not a blind follower and wants to make sure you know it, who uses guns. And the Sniper, who just likes to have fun, because, you know, when you think of young, out-of-control renegades, you think, oh, and they're gonna have a sniper rifle. Gotcha. Together, the three go on missions behind enemy lines and help ensure that the Allies win. Or at least I think that's what we're supposed to get from it, but with the utter lack of dates or anything tying this into historical events other than the war as a whole, it really doesn't work. This game was, of course, inevitable. At this point, Pyro Studios had made three full Commandos games with the bird's eye view and one expansion pack. They couldn't keep just sticking to that. Let's face it, the first one set it up real well and did everything that it could for, you know, 1998. In 2001, we got Commandos 2, which pretty much perfected it, and there wasn't anywhere else to go after that. With the third one, most of the remaining potentially interesting settings and missions were exhausted, and there really wasn't anywhere left to go with that. I do distinctly remember thinking that this would be the next logical step. And this is, you know, six or seven years ago we're talking. Had notions that it might prove troublesome. Then I played the demo, and I kind of wasn't completely taken with it. Unfortunately, nothing has really happened since the demo. If you want a first-hand experience of what it's like to play the full game, just try the demo. Part of the problem here is that this is Pyro's first attempt at tactical FPS. Obviously, we're gonna have to cut them some slack. Much like when judging Westwood's Command & Conquer Renegade. That was their first attempt at an FPS. However, Westwood gave us a fun, dumb, loud action game, and this one, it tries to travel down that path, but it doesn't quite make it. But the thing is also that when Renegade was made, the Command & Conquer universe was already a ton of fun. I mean, it was real-time strategy up to that point, but the universe was just fun, you know? You wanted to know more about it, and suddenly we got to run around in large areas of it with a free 360-degree camera. Commandos, however, has always been about the historical accuracy, the realism, and this very convincing World War II setting. And there's one big problem with turning that into an FPS experience. It's been done. It's been done really well. It's been done a lot. I mean, just from watching videos of other tactical FPS, what can I say? It's just not my genre. I can tell that this just does not measure up to the competition can't control vehicles, only fixed gun positions, and that doesn't even happen very often. It's kind of hard to control how far your grenade goes. In fact, the manual claims that you can hold down the key and throw it further. That never seemed to work for me. You can't even lean. Like in the earlier Commandos games, you can still distract. You can throw a coin 
and provided the enemy isn't looking in your direction, he'll turn to investigate the sound. The manual claimed that I would also still have the cigarette packs from the earlier games. I never found any. I don't know, maybe I got the non-smoking edition of the game or something. I already mentioned the characters. They have the flattest personalities of all four games. And yet, here it's made much more the focus. Characterization was never the focus in this franchise. These also clearly are not the same spy, Green Beret, and Sniper that we've met before. So there's that honestly kind of unnecessary feeling of alienation right from the get-go. The intro movie is a well-done, effective CGI cutscene. It shows all three commandos doing what they do best, and it really gets your adrenaline going, you know. Unfortunately, in the game, it's less using really specific abilities to get out of really specific situations. Too often you feel like what you're doing could just as easily be done by one of the other two. One of the other two. The game goes back and forth between you having to be stealthy and then engaging in gunfights, and the gunfights can be kind of fun. However, too often you realize that it really doesn't matter if you sneak up on someone and stealth kill them, if you just shoot them with a silenced pistol, or if you just shoot them and don't even care about what gun you're using. The sense of threat in this is severely lacking. You can't even drag bodies anymore. And that's something that's been in first person, third person stealth games since, you know, 2000, 2001. I think this one might have been a good idea to outsource for Pyro. There's a ten and a half minute making of featurette on the DVD, and in it, they spend most of the time describing how they made sure to put this or that into the game, and all they mention is stuff that we already take for granted for an FPS, a tactical shooter of 2006, and frankly, a little further back as well. They mention how they spent two and a half years on it, and I don't know, maybe that's part of the reason that it's kind of behind the times. It doesn't have what we expect from a tactical shooter of 2006, and in fact just barely stands out at all. Anyway, basically you just have to leave the bodies where they lie, and mostly they won't even get seen. Yeah. The only way to make a body disappear is if you steal their uniform. So if you kill someone as the spy, and they're of a higher rank than you, and it's the first time you kill that rank, they'll disappear when you take the uniform. And that's it. That's the only way, as far as I can tell, that you can hide any bodies. Stealth killing is awkward because it's like a contextual action. Basically, you have to get in position to do the stealth kill, and then press the use button. Again, I guess they just didn't look at the competition. Again, since the early 2000s, we've had this much more smoothly done in third-person, first-person titles. Hitman, for one. It's also a problem that the spy could just as easily distract someone to make them look in a certain direction as he could stealth kill them. You might accidentally, you know, activate the wrong one and the enemy will look in the wrong direction and spot your other commando, or the dead body that you just left behind because you already killed his buddy by stealth killing him. Come to think of it, I never used the distract using the spy. Not once. Too many situations you can just shoot your way out of. There are three difficulty settings and they try to compel you to play it on the harder ones by basically slaughtering your rating if you don't. The only unlockables are some artwork for some of the levels, and you get them just by completing the level on the easiest. You don't even have to do well, as far as I've been able to tell. For some of the missions, you can switch back and forth between at least two commandos. 
as far as I've been able to tell, they just stand still when you aren't controlling them. They don't take cover, they don't return fire. I mean, from the second game onwards, we've been able to just have a commando shoot in a certain direction if any enemies approached, and you can't give orders, you can't even tell them to come to your position. There's one level where you have to make a retreat, and you basically just have to switch back and forth between the two, run a little bit, and then rinse and repeat. About half the stealth kills don't even look all that cool or even look like they kill the guy. Frankly, one of the snipers looks like he's sodomizing the poor crowd. I mean, boundaries, hello, I know they're Nazis and we're supposed to hate them, but ew. Also, it's kind of surprising that this has so little violence. I mean, the first three weren't very violent and you know, bodies didn't get blown apart in those either, like they don't get in this one. But there was still blood in them. This one, if you shoot someone and they aren't already dead, there will be some blood. But if you slit a throat, for example, no blood. The game has a 16 rating. I don't get it. I guess that's because the word shit is uttered, I don't know, five times? Was that enough? Oh, and sometimes when you blow up a tank, an enemy will come crawling out of it and might be on fire. They're, because, you know, that makes perfect sense, because they wouldn't just die from being inside a tank that explodes. In fact, sometimes an enemy will even crawl out and then start attacking you, as if he'd be in any kind of position to do that. And I don't just mean crawl out. No, they'll be walking, standing, perfectly normally, as if they hadn't just been inside a big hunk of metal that collapsed onto them. For some reason, tanks can be taken out basically just using grenades. You don't even have to hit them a certain place. You know, the tanks used to be fun to fight. Very intense and exciting. There are 14 missions and the longest will take you less than half an hour to complete, and that's not even the norm. The norm is for a mission to take minutes to complete. That's a really short game, and they aren't even all connected, nor do you get a sense of this is that particular critical moment in the war. Honestly, the whole... Honestly, this thing just does not come together. It's a lot of elements, some of which are pretty good, but it just does not form a cohesive whole. The graphics are fine for 2006. That's good, because other than aforementioned CGI intro movie, every cutscene of this is an in-engine cutscene scripted sequence. The cinematography of these is pretty good, especially during the battle scenes. There are some very effective sequences there. The objectives are pretty standard. Infiltrate this or that place, defend this position, rescue and escort him or her. There are some relatively memorable ones among them, but on the whole it's just underwhelming. The game goes back and forth between being too easy and so difficult that it's just frustrating. You know, difficult like it was in the third one, where you didn't really care anymore. And where it frankly didn't feel like the developers cared that much either. I hate to say that because I think they did, but it doesn't show. There are some good features, for example, the radar will indicate an enemy before he can see you. You know, in case you were worried about what now without the bird's eye view. You also still have a third person perspective, although you can't move during it. So basically you use it to peek around corners. You have to be standing still and you can then turn the camera 